Well, folks, here it is. The moment I've been waiting for for uh, a number of months. A bit surprised at how big it is. Uh, I knew it was going to be, the slider part was going to be big, but the crate is a uh, pretty good size. The driver wasn't sure he was going to be able to get it on the lift gate, but it just barely fit and he was able to get in the garage. There's another small crate here, back here, that you'll see it all when I start unboxing it. Um, this is the power feeder. <clears throat> I ordered that a little bit after I ordered the saw, but they just shipped on a separate pallet because there's no room on this one. So let's get to it. The shrink wrap was already off the crate and it's probably because the trucking company that brought it in, there seemed to be a little bit of impact on the back side, and I'm sure they pulled that off to inspect to make sure there wasn't any major damage. Taking all the screws out, there's a lot of them. Some of them were bent, so I had to take them out by hand. Later, I also uncrate the small box in the back, but uh, I didn't show you that because it's pretty much the exact same thing, just in a smaller scale. Some of them are nails, but mostly they're star screws and having a uh, impact driver was really nice. Makes it fairly easy. A lot of the pieces of wood have an American flag stamped on them, so wood is made around trip to Europe and back. Cut the plastic off. Just Big reveal. So let's take a little walk around now that I've got the uh, plastic cover off. Got a lot of boxes in here with various stuff in it. I'm not sure what it is yet. I know these are saw blades. Three of them, and they're 12 inch saw blades. There's a little blade down there. That I believe is the scoring blade. Down here we have this is the support for the uh, I can't think of the name of the um, goes in, in here. I just couldn't think of the name of it, and I'll remember later. This I think is the uh, Minor gauge bar. Some more boxes over here. We'll open all these up in a minute. Uh, dust collector hood and safety hood for the shaper. Uh, extension table and support arms, which are bolted, which are bolted in. Uh, power cord. I was thinking I was going to have to go buy a power cord. It <coughs> probably doesn't have a plug on it, but. We will find out in a minute. But uh, yeah. I don't know if everything's here. I'm assuming it's here, but let's open up these boxes and find out. And this is the the reason I have the saw is this sliding table right here. And I'm sure once I get it all set up and everything, we'll take a look at it. First box has the outfeed table. This little box has a uh, the base for the eccentric clamp, which I'll open in a minute. This is the ripping shoe, which I'll show in another video. 
And here is the eccentric clamp, so we're clamping wood to the table, the sliding part of the table. And this is the lifting bar for moving the saw around. This is the back set of wheels. Makes the whole thing mobile. Not that I plan on moving a lot, but move a little bit. This is the tilt away mount for the power feeder. These are cleaning supplies for keeping the saw nice and clean. This is the minor bar, pretty heavy piece of aluminum. This is the outrigger table that's supported by the outrigger arm. Hmm, documentation, always nice. A few accessories. The wheels to raise and lower and tilt the blade. Bunch of bag of parts, pretty much unlabeled. Fence part that rides along the bar. Which Okay, what's left is that bar and that small piece in front of it. That's part of the fence system, I believe. This is part of the outrigger bar that's still bolted down. The uh, fence and dust collector for the shaper is still bolted down, and this is still bolted down. The tools that were in the bag don't do anything for this. One thing I did note is one of the tie downs for the saw apparently came loose during shipping. So the other three seem okay, so I'll have to pull those up too. And then we'll probably be almost done for the night since I don't have the engine hoist. These are all held down by star screws. The table extension is made out of three millimeter steel and it's quite heavy. As a matter of fact, most of this stuff is made out of uh, pretty thick steel. Bar for the fence, probably weighs like 35, 40 pounds. It's just one big round piece of steel. all sorts of little stickers all over the machine. Everything's got little stickers on it. I'm assuming they're all parts number and stuff, but there were a lot of stickers. So that's the outrigger arm. It's held up against the machine by a magnet when you're not using it. This is the power feeder motor. That's the stand that goes on the tilt-away mount, which we'll eventually get to. The power feeder itself. That particular crate was 190 pounds. So I assembled the lifting bar, and in order to get this off the pallet, I'm going to get an engine hoist, and so why, the reason why I put the, put the lifting bar together is to like get it raised up enough to get the lifting straps underneath the saw. Um, I was going to put the rear wheels on, but then I realized if I put the axle through, then the lifting straps would be either between the axle and the machine, or pulling on the axle, and I already tried to use the axle to help raise it up a little bit and it bent a little bit but it sprung back into regular shape so got lucky on that so i'm not sure how i'm gonna get the wheels on it tomorrow when i get off the 
palette. Um, there are some rubber feet that go on this side, but at this moment I can't get it up high enough to put the rubber feet on. So I guess I'll do that also when I have the engine hoist up and I can uh, do that. So kind of waiting for tomorrow. When I get the engine hoist and then get this thing off the pallet, then I should be at least get it on the ground and have the uh, wheels installed. So for those of you who like pulling the plastic off the front of your smartphone screen, it's pretty much the same. Here I'm putting on the plug. The yellow and green striped wire is the ground, and the other two, it doesn't matter what they, where you hook them up, they're uh, red and the blue. Motor only turns one way, so it doesn't matter. This is a 20 amp, 220 volt plug. That's all we can do tonight. Okay, lunchtime, I went over and got an engine hoist to uh, see if we can get this off the pallet. But I found that the engine hoist is uh, the legs are too thick. So I had to try and get the crate up off the ground enough to put the legs underneath. And the only thing I had to do that was a. Uh, small hand cart which said the weight limit was like 300 pounds so I didn't break the hand cart but the saw is close to uh, 800 pounds so I've got the pallet up on boards and we're just going to see what we can do about getting this thing off the pallet. I had two 8 foot loop straps and what that means is they're really 16 feet long. I probably could have done better having uh, six foot straps but I shortened them up by twisting them. And as we lift up the machine you'll see that the back one probably could have used another twist. The back corner hangs down a little bit. When you're using lifting straps you can't have it go up against sharp edges so you have to, I made these uh, blocks of wood that with a soft round over edge so according to the specifications on that came with the lifting straps. So here I'm just trying to get that back corner up just a little bit. I'm almost at the maximum height the uh, engine hoist will raise the machine. It's always a little bit nervous having this much weight anywhere off the ground. I can't imagine having it any higher. That last corner is just being a little, little tough. And she's free. And she's noised out from under the pallet. You turn it around and lay it down. Trying to come up with a way to keep it from coming down on the leg. Obviously that didn't work, but I tried twice just to make sure. So just hold it and let it down slowly. It looks good. And there it is. Everything seems okay. I thought the hard part was done, but they're still putting the wheels on.
Oops. There's a few extra screws I forgot to take out earlier. There's a pallet, which is uh, 2.1 meters long and 1.2 meters wide. And the lifting bar, which you can't pull it too far up because it pops out of the little hole that the lifting bar sits in. So what I did is get a board to stick underneath the lifting bar to give it a little bit more height. It's really hard to screw in little screws when you can't see what you're doing. You just have to do it by feel. Now to try and get the saw off the wood. Well, I kicked it around, but it's still stuck under there. Try, nope, that didn't work. I need just a little bit more to get wood under there so I could put it in the, uh, the mounting feet. Let me lift bar up. Now I get the little feet put on. Being very careful not to put my fingers under anything. I'm surprised I never bumped my head on the sliding table. And we've got a piece of wood out, and we'll kick it out. And we're done. And we'll call this thing uncreated. Thank you for joining me and watching my little adventure here. Please subscribe if you're interested in learning more about sliding table saws and how to use them. And we'll see you in the next video.